This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Xbox has had a rough start to 2024. Sure, they had a really strong showing at Developer Direct back in January, but Microsoft also fired a bunch of people from their gaming division, and they basically split the fandom over all of this third-party craziness. But excitement is once again brewing for Xbox with strong previews for Hellblade 2, possible first looks at Gears of War 6 this summer, and much to the surprise of people who are saying that Xbox is gonna die, they're gonna exit the gaming business, they are cooked. We got new Xbox hardware to look forward to as well. I did a video a couple of weeks ago where I teamed up with my buddy, Jimmy Champagne, and we talked about everything you need to know about this rumored Xbox handheld that's supposedly being worked on for Microsoft's next-gen console lineup. But much like the Series X and S split skews that we see today, alongside this handheld apparently is going to be a standalone traditional high-end Xbox. One that has the potential to be a true gaming powerhouse. In today's edition of Xbox Ready, the YouTube channel that is all about Xbox, we're gonna dive into everything that you need to know about this next-gen beast that Microsoft is working on, or rather, everything that it could be. And remember, if you like Xbox content and you wanna stay Xbox Ready, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and help me get to my next goal of, I, I, I made a really big deal about getting to 160K and now that I'm here, I want more. Let's try to get to 200K, baby. So Xbox as a company, their leadership, they are no strangers to making big promises. Sometimes they pan out, other times not so much. Step change for gamers and developers must deliver true 4K gaming, and high fidelity VR. In emails obtained exclusively by Windows Central, Xbox president Sarah Bond doubles down on one major promise and makes a couple of new ones. According to Jazz Corden over at Windows Central, per emails received by Windows Central, confirmed by Microsoft as genuine, Xbox president Sarah Bond recently briefed her team on various subjects. And in these emails, Sarah Bond once again doubles down on the promise that this next-gen Xbox is gonna represent the largest technical ever seen between console generations, a claim that she initially made back in February on the Xbox official podcast. Now, if this turns out to be true, that'll be a moment of like, damn, Sarah Bond was flexing hard here. And if it doesn't, it could bite them in the ass. We've been here before, right? Leading up to the Series X and S's release, they were going around saying that the Series X was the most powerful console, was the most powerful console, was the most powerful console. And while technically that might be true, we've had to endure years, years of being told like, oh, sorry, we can only get Redfall at 30 FPS. Oh, sorry, uh, we can only get Starfield to run at 30 FPS. Oh, Sorry, we can only get Hellblade 2 <laughs> run at 30 FPS. That's a whole separate conversation. I'm not going to pretend to be like a graphical performance snob or anything like that. We can we can talk about that in another video. No, the important thing here is that they are setting the bar incredibly high and people are wondering how are they going to do it? How are you going to have this fantastic console technological leap when this past one for Gen 9 was less of a leap and more of a hop? Well, the answer to that question might lie in some things that Microsoft is working on in their other divisions, like for PC and Windows devices. A good way to make sure that games look awesome on your next-gen Xbox is to make sure that upscaling is easier than ever. And it looks like Microsoft has the tools to do just that with Microsoft Direct Super Resolution. Now, I'm gonna be real with you guys. This is something that I needed to educate myself on. But thanks to some helpful articles from WCCF Tech and a helpful video from Digital Foundry, I was able to do just that. I was able to educate myself, enlighten myself on the subject. Microsoft DSR, according to Digital Foundry, is basically codifying super resolution into an API within DirectX and will essentially enable wider support to other upscaling tech like FSR and DLSS. According to Microsoft's own website, they say API enables multi-vendor SR through a common set of inputs and outputs, allowing a single code path to activate a variety of solutions, including DLSS super resolution, AMD AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, and even Intel XESS. Now, this is something that they're specifically working on for Windows, which is great news because oftentimes Windows ports, <laughs> they're not the best, let's just be honest. Compared to their Steam counterparts, compared to our console counterparts, oftentimes there is trouble with the Windows ports, especially from a graphical and performance perspective. So this could actually make them competitive on that front and make the Xbox app specifically an attractive place to play games. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a good looking website and you need it quick, Squarespace is the all-in-one website building platform that give you the tools to do just that. And if you're like me and you're sitting there like, I've never built a website 
website before. I've never done anything like that. How can I hope to have a great looking website that'll take my brand to the next level? Squarespace. They have these pre-built templates that you can load up with whatever you want. Slideshows of your work, videos of your work, links to your products. The professional look of a Squarespace powered website it will make it easy for you to connect with your customers and grow the reach of your brand. And on top of the ability to import all of your media and stuff that you want to display on your page, they have these really accessible designer tools that'll really give your page a little extra razzle dazzle. You can pick out color and design palettes that match whatever aesthetic you're going for, as well as a ton of other easy to use effects that'll really make your page pop. If you want to get started on building your own website, whatever that may be, you can check my link down in the description if you want a free trial and 10% off of your first website or domain purchase. Thanks again so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. But while this would help with the resolution, of course, the jury is still out though on whether or not this can help with frame generation. Separately, Microsoft seems to be really high on these new laptops that they're gonna unveil next month. According to Tom Warren over at The Verge, Microsoft is confident Windows on ARM could finally beat Apple. Specifically, they're confident that ARM-powered laptops are gonna be more powerful than M3-powered MacBook Airs in terms of CPU performance and also AI-accelerated tasks with the help of this fancy new processor, the Snapdragon X Elite. Tom Warren goes on to say that Qualcomm is also confident in its new processors, offering hands-on opportunities to the media recently with the Snapdragon X Elite chips. Qualcomm has also shown benchmarks that beat Apple's M2 processor in many areas and Intel's latest Core Ultra 7 chips. Qualcomm also believes that most Windows games should just work on its upcoming ARM laptops. So we could eventually see some gaming laptops powered by ARM processors. And that's kind of the lead here, that Windows on ARM, with the help of these new processors, are going to be really awesome at emulation specifically. The article also mentions a big push for AI in Windows, saying that 50% of new Windows devices will be running AI-capable chips by the end of 2026. Hmm, that kind of lines up with these rumors that the next-gen Xboxes are going to come out in 2026. But how does any of this relate to Xbox? Well, to me, as someone who has been following Xbox very, very closely, both of these things, if they're incorporated into Xbox consoles, could represent the evolution, the next step in the Xbox ecosystem. We know that Microsoft leadership at Xbox, they're interested in blurring the boundaries between console and PC gaming. Their goal is to make every screen an Xbox. And we're also hearing more and more that traditional console gaming, that market has kind of reached saturation and it's just not going to cut it anymore, focusing on just consoles. Phil Spencer recently made comments saying like, it's kind of whack that you can only buy games through the Microsoft store on Xbox. What if for the next Xbox, we had like the Epic Game Store and then people were speculating, well, why stop there? Why not add Steam? While that sounds good in practice, a lot of people, again, were left wondering, how are they going to do that? How, Phil? Well, by packing consoles with the same architecture, the same chips, the same processors as Windows devices, effectively making consoles many more affordable PCs, that would be a good start. The key to all of this lies in the app emulation part of what we were just talking about for Windows on ARM. They say in that article that Windows games emulated on the laptop will just work, which is pretty cool because there are rumors that suggest the Surface team is helping out with the development of the handheld Xbox. It's possible that this emulation that they're working on for their upcoming line of gaming PCs could be used in the Xbox handheld. If I'm Xbox, if I was the king, if I was Phil Spencer or someone above him even, I would push it further. I would put all of those same processors, everything that's being worked on with Microsoft DSR, Windows on ARM, these new chips, these new processors, the Snapdragon X Elite, I'd put that in the standalone traditional Xbox console as well. No longer would I have to pay to develop three different versions of one game, a Series X version, a Series S version, and a Windows version. No, it would all just be Windows. And if it's on Windows, you're playing it natively. And if you're playing it on console, you're emulating. And yes, emulation can be whatever, but even if that's the case, when you combine that with more options for upscaling through DirectSR, it could more than make up for any performance drops, in theory, 
or turn okay looking games into really great looking games. We also know that the next Xbox is going to support backwards compatibility. And I hate that that has to be clarified. It used to be just a guarantee. Like if I buy a PS3 or an Xbox 360, of course you can play games for the previous generation. But those days are no more. We are in the modern era of gaming, of course. And straight up, Xbox has already done great work on backwards compatibility up until this point. But people are concerned though, because it seems like Xbox wants to go into this all digital future. We heard a couple of weeks back that the physical games release division at Xbox was shut down. There are rumors floating around saying that copies of Starfield are being removed from Walmart and like major European retailers. So if Xbox goes mostly digital, how can they preserve games if there are no games anymore, no game discs? Sarah Bond addressed that a little bit. She said, we have formed a new team dedicated to game preservation, important to all of us at Xbox and the industry itself. We are building on our strong history of developing backwards compatibility to our players, and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of Xbox games for future generations of players to enjoy. Now, just to be clear, yes, I know that all digital future, it kind of sucks because the used game market drives up. Like, it's good to have options, right? But physical games doesn't always mean game preservation. Like, what happens if the console that I need to play that game breaks down? It's like, oh great, I have an original copy of the Fire Emblem that first made its way over to the United States when I was a kid, but wait a minute, I don't have my Game Boy SP or Game Boy Advance anymore. In theory, that can happen to this next generation Xbox as well. Sure, you'll be able to play old Xbox games on it, but what if they stop supporting it? There's all sorts of issues, right? But if this next Xbox is a Windows device, a mini PC, that becomes less important because even if your Xbox blows up, even even if they, whatever, stop supporting it, it'll still be available on Windows. You can still play it on PC. It's not so much digital games that are a threat to games preservation, in my opinion. It's more like always online, always got to check if we have a connection games. I know it's a little bit early to be talking about next gen Xboxes, especially when there's a growing sentiment that this generation kind of sucks or it's like just getting started. But Microsoft says that it's working full steam ahead on these next gen Xboxes, whether it's uh, Windows mini PC or a handheld Xbox. And if they're working on those consoles as hard as they say they are, it's entirely possible that these rumors saying that these next Xboxes are gonna come out in 2026 versus 2028, entirely possible that they're true. I don't really mind Xbox looking ahead. You know, console generations used to be like six, seven years instead of like the eight, 10 that we've come to expect them to be. But again, they've set the expectations extremely high. And if they don't deliver the largest technical leap in a generation, a lot of fans are probably just gonna be like, nah, I'm good with my Series X or S, I can wait. As a reminder, this is all just speculation on my front. This is not concrete. This is my way of making sense of a lot of the things that Xbox has been doing, like saying, that Game Pass isn't the focus, they want to focus more on the ecosystem, turn every screen into an Xbox, this whole third party situation, shipping their games over to other consoles. All of these things, when you look at them in an isolated manner, they are confusing, let's be honest. But when I put on my little conspiracy theorist hat, kind of, you know, channel the meme of Charlie from Always Sunny, like connecting the dots on the billboard, they start to make a lot of sense to me if they're working towards a true open-ended ecosystem that, you know, consoles are the same, PCs are the same, handheld gaming's the same. And honestly, that sounds kind of dope. A lot of people will come on here and be like, no, it's their way of coping because they lost the console wars, they can't do it anymore, everything they do is a failure. But it's not just Xbox. Sure, they are in third place in terms of hardware sales when it comes to traditional home consoles. But it's becoming clear that these platform holders need to diversify their approach. It used to be, yes, I sell you a console, you play games on the console, we make money. But consumer behavior gaming behavior is shifting. Destin retweeted something very interesting that he talked on his channel about. Shout out to Destin real quick. I don't know if he's gonna be watching this video, but I saw that he commented on another video I did where I was talking about the shadow differences on PS5 versus Series X and Hi-Fi Rush. Shout out to you, man, I'm a big fan. But he retweeted a quote from Daniel Ahmad 
that says even in Japan, where consoles have been traditionally dominant and 41% of gamers played a console game in the past year, only 14% of all gamers exclusively play on console, according to our 2023 survey of Japanese gamers. And while sure, Japan is one country and a big world full of gamers, it wouldn't surprise me if we saw similar trends here in the US, over in Europe, in the UK down in South America, wherever. Thinking back on my personal journey as a gamer, it's like, yeah, I had one console, maybe two, like the Nintendo 64 Game Boy combo, PS2, PSP combo, my Xbox 360 to my Xbox One. Those were my main consoles. That's where I played video games. No longer. More and more people are getting like a PS5 for the exclusive, a PC for everything else. Or they got a Nintendo Switch and another console, or they just are PC, or they're playing on console and their phone. It's clear that Microsoft with Xbox, Sony with PlayStation, they got to switch things up a bit. And we're seeing it over on PlayStation as well. For years, they were like, we're only going to put our games on PlayStation. You want to play our games? Buy a PlayStation. Maybe in a couple of years, we'll port them over to PC. And now they're like, no, we want to put our games on PC like we did with Helldivers. I mean, we'll do it by on a case by case basis, but we're definitely interested in doing more of that. If Xbox could get ahead of this trend and really blend their ecosystem in a way that it's truly seamless, you're playing the same versions of games across multiple devices, all of your stuff is connected, whether you're on cloud, console, PC, kind of like what we have now, this could be huge for them. Everyone's looking at them like, man, they're stupid, they're doing stupid stuff. But if it all comes together in the way that I'm envisioning it, it could be something that is truly special. Anyways, guys, that's all the Xbox stuff I have to talk about today. Thanks so much for joining me for another edition of Xbox Ready, and we'll see you in the next video.